Um, yeah, and a lot of it has been about talking to people. Um, so, I mean, I hate this kind of business speak, you know, stakeholders. Does anybody describe themselves as a stakeholder? Really? I mean, what sort, what sort of stakeholders have people got in, in the organisations that you're involved with? Who, who are your stakeholders? Human beings. Human beings, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, Humanity. Yeah, but if we're going to categorise those human beings, what are people involved with? I mean, are we talking about customers? Are we talking about... Yeah, funders. Funders. Mm -hmm. Job seekers. Job seekers. Residents. Yeah. Suppliers. Suppliers. <laughs> Yeah, community. community, communities, councils, that sort of thing. So there's also different varieties of stakeholders. It's like this business speak just drives me nuts. But, um, but I wrote it up there anyway because that was what the title was. So um, uh, how, how do we do it? Well, I was, I was sort of thinking earlier about how we did it with Brighton Energy Co-op. So the first thing to do is work out your finances. That doesn't really sound like stakeholders, but there's no point in communicating with your stakeholders unless your finances work. So it's really important that whatever you're doing, the finances run properly and uh, I'll talk a bit about finances a bit more in the uh, when I talk a bit later on about running the co-op or starting a co-op but there's uh, yeah th that's the first thing to do there's no point in doing it unless you, you, the money doesn't work and then try and find out what these people want there's quite a lot of market research out there in co-op land anyway I, I don't know about other sectors there's, but I imagine in the public sector there's, there's bound to be loads of reports on stakeholders stuff because public sector is specialised in spending lots of money on reports. Um, but um, really like dig into, dig into who your stakeholders are. Try and find, you can do a lot of stuff on the desktop before you start doing anything at all. And find out what other people are doing as well. Um, so what are your people who are doing something similar? Try and identify similar stakeholders to them. Um, and really try and work out who they are. I mean Brighton Energy Cult for example, we looked into a bunch of research by Co-ops UK and found that most people who invest in co-ops are over 35, about 55% women, uh, a lot of them are members of the National Trust, lots of them read The Guardian, they usually invest about 1,500 quid. All this kind of stuff um, helps you to make decisions when you're thinking about how to talk to them because if you talk to them, if, if you know your investors, or your, your, not your investors, your stakeholders are over 40, there's no point in referencing the X factor or I don't know, do people ever thought we watched it? I don't watch the expert. <laughs> but that kind of thing, you know what I mean? There's no point in talking to them about it. Because <laughs> it's just outside their area of... <laughs> you're obviously an average viewer, if you can't spell it. Um, yeah, and it really helps when you're thinking about communicating with them, if you know who they are. Because I've got somebody in mind when, when, I, when I think about this over 35-year-old National Trust Guardian reading 55% uh, woman. Uh, you know, the, the, and it really helps to be able to picture that. So that kind of brings you out of stakeholder land and into like a real person. So if you can find out this sort of market research. Yeah, and it, so the stakeholder thing sounds a bit academic. That's the last point. But after a while, you just kind of get you, you sort of get you in, start to intuit who these people are, and then you can then you're talking to them rather than talking to a concept of them. And then you've got to work out a way of talking to them. So you can stand on a soapbox and it's not going to get you very far. What you've got to, I think, it, or it's, it's really good to create um, communication channels. And these are basically like, if you envisage pipes that lead to somebody's ear or eyeball. Um, and there's various different ways of doing that. Um, Facebook and Twitter, obviously. Um, but it doesn't just happen. You've got to start doing it and then invite your friends and do stuff and, you know, post stuff and tweet stuff and just, it's like a, you just get the pipe and keep sticking stuff down the pipe. And uh, funnily enough, more people start to listen, providing the stuff you put down the pipe is of reasonable quality and rele relevant to, to, to what you said it's for. And then um, an email list, I think an email list is the most powerful communications thing that you're going to have, short of broadcast TV, which is probably not going to happen for most of us. But an email list, um, I've read something like Billy Graham in the United States, Ten years ago, he got hold of an email list of three million people, and like most of his power and his fundraising ability is based on that email list. It's somehow it's intimate an email. You know, you see things on Facebook. It's like, ah, oh, yeah, that's kind of interesting, and you click on it, and it's like. But if somebody emails you, somehow it's a personal interaction. You read the subject if you click on it, and I'd say seventy-five percent of the money we've raised comes from our email list. We've got about three thousand people on on our email list, and it's just building those email lists is key. So wherever you go, collect emails. 
and you know it doesn't just happen overnight. I'm a big fan in doing it illegitimately. So somebody hits the puts their emails in the CC as opposed to the BCC box, then I'm probably going to nick those emails. <laughs> you know, it's it's. I've got another business which is Yoga Holidays, and uh, the email list for that was key to set to keep the <coughs> business alive. Just email out six thousand people. Facebook, Twitter, advertising, whatever, uh, but the email list is really key. So it's, it's like whenever you come to events like this, get, uh, get cards, get business cards, um, you know, all that kind of stuff helps to build the list. It takes time, but it's really valuable. A PR list as well, so um, that's just for getting the message out to press. That can, you can do that, again, via uh, desktop, so you can, you can find a list of Brighton publications, find a list of Brighton bloggers, uh, find a list of local TV, uh, Facebook groups, all that kind of stuff you can just do online, just get a list of that. Uh, and then, I'll talk about it in a bit, when, when you've got stuff to say, send it out to this communications channel. And then the website, which is the fundamental bit, I think, for an organisation like Brighton Energy Carpet, or a web page at least. Um, and I think it's really valuable to be able to update that website yourself, because it often things change. You'll be doing new stuff as you go along, you might want to talk about new stuff and if you can't do it yourself you're going to have to find somebody else to do it, that takes time or you might have to pay them. And it's not that hard to operate WordPress now and you can do quite a lot with it. So it's well, I think it's well worth it, at least spending some time familiarising yourself with at least with the basics of WordPress. For, for people that don't know, WordPress is the, the way you update lots and lots of websites, about 14 or 15 million websites or so, or use this kind of thing called WordPress. Most a lot of websites are built on it and it's just, it, 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 the more you can do yourself, the quicker it will be and the, 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 the more cost effective, or not cost effective, cheaper it will be. So, okay, so we talked about the channels, so these pipes to people's eyes and ears. So what we're going to put down them, these pipes. Um, so it is, it's a bit like, it's not just a one-off thing. Because people do listen, it, sometimes it sounds like they don't listen to the, you know, you send out 100 emails and nobody answers you, and you think nobody's listening. But actually, 20% of people might have read that email. They won't get back to you, but they'll have read it. So it is worth thinking about what you're talking to them. And they, you know, you'll send out an email once a month, once be two months or whatever, and uh, they'll be, the 20% of people will be reading it. And you start to create a bit of a story because, you know, they'll have read the previous one, they'll read your future one. So it's a bit of a narrative. And um, if you actually break down how we all get so fixated on news, or on, well, let's say news. Um, news is full of events. So things happen. Government says this, somebody falls off that, weather does this. It's all things that happen. And you can do the same with, uh, with communication and messaging. It's all about doing things. So you might think about uh, achieving a target. So from Brighton Energy Corp, when we, when we hit. I don't know, if we've raised £50,000, we'll set, tell everybody, we raised £50,000, great. Feels like a milestone, they're like, oh yeah, they've got there, and then it's like, okay, we're going for 100000 and then when we hit 100000 we tell everybody again. So we're creating milestones that we can then stick down the communication channels. Um, achievements, yeah, when you finish something, um, or when you raise the money for something, or when you uh, make an appearance somewhere, uh, or even if you are featured in something. We were on Meridian the other day and I did a blog post, uh, uh, email out yesterday saying we've been on Meridian. So that that's a kind of event in itself. So try and look for these events that happen with whatever you're doing. And then, they can, and it's surprising actually how many, of you, how many there can be. Some, I mean, it's, 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 sometimes it seems a bit trivial, some of these events. But if people are signed up to your communication channels, then they're interested in this area. And I was reading, um, Infinity Wholesale Brochure yesterday, which is amazing. It's like going to Infinity, but really cheap. Well, about 30% off. And um, it says that their new Brazil nut supplier has just bought a fire engine for a town in Brazil where they make the nuts, they, they grow the nuts, whatever, process the nuts. <laughs> um, and I thought, yes, well, that's a great little story. You know, it's just interesting so if you're interested in organic food. Of course, Infinity's uh, communications are rubbish because they were. They were born in 1971 and they didn't, they didn't have any internet type stuff then. But, but if they could, that was a great little nugget. You know, it's a pretty specific fire engine in Brazilian town, but it's a nice little nugget. So you can think about those kind of events that happen that you can then put through the communication channels. Yeah, remember you're creating a narrative and you have spoken to these people before and you can sort of build that up as you go along. 
Um, I mean, we're trying something at the moment. We're trying to get. We've invited David Cameron to come down and visit Brighton Energy Co-op. Mm. So that's going to be an ongoing series of stuff um, that we're going to keep going, um, and hopefully we'll be able to get if we can get any responses or something like that. That'll then be a uh, event we can then start. To, so it becomes a story. Um, be upbeat and um, be f uh, funny works best. Funny is hard too, um, but if you can make people laugh, then they'll listen and they remember. Um, and include calls to action. Why not? It's an opportunity. And um, yeah, emphasize the benefits and make the benefits credible. That's, that's kind of hard if you're starting up something new, but if you've done stuff before, then you know, it's good to flog that. So people actually, if you're saying this is, this is going to be good for you because of this, uh, I can say that till, till the cows come home, but who's going to believe me? But if I've been doing it for 10 years and I've got 10 years projects in my, in, behind me, then um, people are going to believe me more. Uh, some more stuff about content. Yeah, blog posts, you create a distinctive voice. Um, I'm trying to think of somebody who does that. There's a... Actually, there's a, there's a campaigning group called Frack Off, which I used to be part of, and I think they have a really distinctive voice in that it's, it's kind of critical but credible. Um, it's that kind of thing. Uh, and I think it's, I said being upbeat earlier, I also think that being, uh, taking issues head on as well, I think if you're constant, there's a lot of marketing that's uh, constantly upbeat, and uh, it's a bit, again, I think that's really not treating people as if they're human beings somehow, because if we're con if, we, if we're constantly putting out messages that are like, yeah, this is great, this is wonderful, it's fantastic, that's not how we live. Sometimes we get pissed off at things. We look, there's, some, there's some things about some things we don't like, and I think if we if we can also sort of constructively critique what things that are perhaps opposed to what you're, or what things that you're trying to get better, I think that's that's a, a possibility. Um, it's a bit marketing. People don't like like it when you say things like that because they're just like, no, you can't be negative. You just got you've got to have this American like, yeah, go on, everybody. But I don't think that's realistic. We're not uh, Americans. It's a bit like horoscopes. You know, you read the when you read a horoscope, depending on which one you're reading. I mean, you can read out any horoscope to anyone saying it's theirs, and they'll believe it. You know, that's mm. the, the way that they work. Mm. And within them, there's a there's a little narrative story that says some good stuff and some bad stuff. Mm -hmm. And you sort of pick up on it because you kind of you're hopeful that mm. the bad stuff won't happen, but you're mm. and, and that the good stuff will. So mm. yeah. you have a mix, like you said. Yeah. You're acknowledging people do have concerns and worries. So you yeah. Just yeah. I mean, don't just say you know this guy's all right. Start, no. start, 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 but. Yeah. Um, don't ignore it. Yeah, and yeah. no, be con perhaps be constructive about it, or yeah. at least be credible about it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, tweet, Facebook, Facebook, anything you find, just stick it down Twitter and Facebook. You know, as long as it's relevant, um, just keep feeding it. Uh, advertising. I've got about a minute left. I mean, is there anybody involved in a kind of commercial idea here? Is advertising would that be part of the promotional communications thing? A little bit. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, advertising is hard. I, I, it's often hard to tell exactly what you're spending your money on or what, what, what results your money is achieving with advertising, unless you've got a really big budget, which not many people have. Come to events and stand here and talk about stuff. I think that's, that's really one of our things that we've done a lot over the last two years. You know, I talk to residents groups, I talk to pensioners associations, I talk to green drinks people around the county. And it's really, it's really, and I, I, I really thought, suddenly realised the value of it and I saw Caroline Lucas doing the same thing. She, two years ago, I was going around any event pretty much and just speaking about Brian Energy Carp and Caroline Lucas would be there. Sometimes it would be three people in a room, two of them would be asleep. But she, <laughs> does, you know, she just does it and does it and does it and does it. And when you've done 50 or 100 organisations, you know, this is what grassroots support or grassroots uh, movements uh, come from. It's that, it's that legwork. It ain't glamorous. It's not like speaking to stadiums and stuff, but... You keep on doing it, and you do get there in the end. And you can go on a website, 5% return on investment plus 30% tax break. Get your checkbooks out now. <laughs> keep, 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 and keep going, yeah, wherever you go, keep pushing the message.